Melbourne in the 1920s, a lusty, vulgar, carefree city, trying to forget the long-drawn agony of the First World War. It was an age of ragtime and flappers, pianolas, the new valve wireless, bobbed hair, rolled stockings and wailing saxophones. Keeping the pleasures of peacetime in check was a dedicated army of wowsers. Bathing on Sundays was forbidden and neck to knees the rule. The young Prince of Wales was making a triumphant tour of the Dominions. He came ashore at St Kilda Pier and after a handshake with the Mayor prepared to face the cameras. They were reminders of the spacious, ostentatious days of the Edwardian era. Old hotels like the Bull and Mouth, Ruberus and the Orient, with their ornate plaster embellishments, dusty palms and gilt-encrusted mirrors, were still standing. There were wine saloons, snooker parlours, sporting clubs, gymnasiums, shooting galleries and Chinese cafes, where those in search of pleasure spent their evenings. While in the city new trams were replacing the old cable cars, in the back streets, a pint-sized punk was establishing his reputation as king of the underworld. For over ten years, he was a household name, regarded by the public as court jester, but by those who really knew him as a flash little runt and sneak killer. He flitted about the hotel bars and racetracks, dressed in style. Diamond rings glittered on his stubby fingers. He smoked expensive cigars. These were the fringe benefits of a career in crime. Uh, he always treated me very well. He was very generous to deserving cases. I don't think there was anything great about him. Mostly he was regarded as a cheeky larrikin. A killer moron. <laughs> 